Okay, so now I'm working on the uh, front differential on the uh, 07 Polaris ATV. Uh, I have the front diff all apart here. Um, problem was that it wasn't engaging in four-wheel drive. So uh, I tried to find some information on this uh, online. There's not a lot on there about this one. It has uh, EBS. I think it's called or EDS. Um, it's supposed to uh, control your descent when you're going down a hill. So this system is a little different than the rest of them. So originally, I, when I opened this up, if you can see these roll pins here, these ones I haven't put in yet, but um, mo a lot of these were broken off, missing. Uh, so I wasn't sure if that's why it wasn't in working in four-wheel drive. There's also this hub inside here with the uh, roller bearings that is a problem with these uh, differentials they break but this one was good so uh, I really looked on uh, online for information on these pins and uh, there wasn't very much on it I went to the local Polaris dealer they gave me a little bit of information not much so um, so what I figured out is uh, these pins are for the uh, the uh, descent control these are the hubs that go in here. There's two hubs, one on each side. And then your axles fit in here. So what happens, it's kind of hard to explain, there's cut clutches here. And here's the one side of the case. This plunger here is supposed to come out and hit on these clutches and that's how it slows you down. Basically it's a simple explanation. but. It's more complicated than that. So I think what the real problem was with mine was that there was an electrical problem. There's no ground. And I didn't realize that at first because I checked for power at the plug and there was power. But I didn't check for the ground because uh, wiring is not my thing. I panic whenever there's a wiring problem. But um, let me get this hooked up and I'll show you how this uh, magnet works. There's a magnet here. This is the side of the uh, differential. And then there's this metal ring that fits into, into here. And what happens is when that magnet gets attracted to this, or this ring gets attracted to the magnet, this is all turning. This ring stays put and it engages these rollers onto these hubs and that's what's supposed to give you your four-wheel drive so uh, let me get this battery hooked up and I'll show you. So I got power to the uh, plug here and here's that ring I was talking about and if you try and turn it it's really stuck to that magnet you can turn it a bit but it's pretty tough so now that's what is supposed to engage your four-wheel drive It'll lock this hub in with the differential. At least I think that's how it's supposed to work. So you'll see once I disconnect the power. You can see the, the ring comes off. So I'm going to put this all together <clears throat> and uh, see if we can get it to work. I'm going to start with putting these roll pins in, the differential. Now the original roll pin I had for this, or the one that I was able to take out, I don't know if you can see it, it's in the bag here, it's a small one, and it's, and actually it's a uh, different type of roll pin. It's called the, uh, I can't remember it's called, but it's kind of rolled. There's no, uh, no opening in it. So I couldn't really find any of those, so I'm just using regular roll pins. Hopefully it'll work. So all I'm going to do is tap these in until they bottom out. And then I'll have to cut them off. Like I say, this is only for the EBS system. I think it's like electronic braking system. Care if that works, but since I'm here, I might as well try and fix it. 
fixed it. Okay, so now I got them in. So now I'm going to just cut these off to the right. But I spent some uh, extra time working on these pins, trying to get the length just right because what happens is <clears throat> these are the hubs. Your oxo goes in here. These are clutches. So what happens when you're going downhill, <clears throat> like under five kilometers an hour, I think it is, there's pistons in the housing, that black ring, which is hooked up to an oil supply. And uh, anyway, it, it pushes on these clutches, which will lock the hubs in. So what I'm trying to do is get them the right length so they're not pushing on the clutches and I'm able to turn the shaft. So I think I got her just about right here. They're spinning. And as soon as you push on these clutches, you can't spin them anymore. So uh, I've been uh, filing them down just to get them right. So I'll start putting it. I'm gonna put the uh, roller bearings inside this cage. There are little springs in here that hold them, but you kind of have to play around with it to get them in there. So you gotta put them in kind of halfway, try and keep them from falling out. I'll just do this first row to show you. So I say don't uh, do what I'm doing because I'm not sure if this is 100% right, but. Maybe this will help somebody. You kind of have to keep it from popping out. There's 20 of these, so you now you push it in. So you got the first row in. So I'll do the same for the second row and come back. Got all the roller bearings in there. You can see them in there. So the uh, first piece to go into the housing is uh, this hub. And uh, it just fits in like this. And uh, I'm not replacing these seals. Uh, they were quite expensive. Like almost 90 bucks for a set. So what I've done, I bought some of this AT205. Scotty Skil Kilmore says it uh, rejuvenates rubber seals, so I'll give it a try. Can't hurt, so. Uh. Okay, so I guess the first hub is in. And that's where your axle goes. So now, the next part is the uh, ring gear. And I have the uh, roller cage housing in there with the rollers. And there is a. Uh, bushing in there. Can't see it but it's uh, just a thin piece of metal. Okay, so this goes in. It's been a while since I had this apart so hopefully I remember how it goes. Okay, so that's in. I'll just show you this part here. This is also part of that uh, braking system. There's two electrical connectors on this. There's this one for that big ring, and here's another one that goes in here. And it does the same thing. It magnetizes to, to that. Let's see if I can get this out quick. Okay, so what's in here, there's a pump. It pumps here, it pumps fluid into this housing which is supposed to push these pistons out and, and it hits on these clutches. At least I think that's how it works. So what you got here is um, I guess it's like an eccentric as you can see. So that goes in first and that'll push on that little roller which pushes the pump And this is what attracts to the magnet. So anyway, that's that. So let me get set up for the next phase. Okay, so the next thing that goes on is this spacer. Now this spacer 
does have some wear on it because I guess when those pins were broken off this was spinning which it shouldn't it should have been held the clutches should have been held with the pins so this goes on here and these pins aren't sticking out much so okay so now we put the next uh, hub on and make sure it's hooked into those pins. Okay, now as you can see, okay, it's turning. Okay, I'll just try and show you how this uh, descent control works. So as you see, everything's spinning, but if I put the uh, shaft in here just to hold it, you can see that that hub isn't turning, or at least the axle's not turning. So then what happens when that, this piston hits on these clutches, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to push on the shaft to simulate that. So now if you push down, so there's where you get your descent control. And if you release it, it won't, it'll spin in there, the hub's not uh, being held, so that's how that works. Okay, I forgot to put a piece in, so this here goes in, this goes in first, and that locks into the plastic retainer. Okay, so we still got the spacer in there. Now we put this in. that. Now, oh yes, there's also a little o-ring, and the o-ring goes in here. Now that o-ring's not in the greatest shape, but hopefully it'll work. Okay, I've had these, um, these o-rings there's one here, and there's one on the uh, other casing here. I had this O-ring soaking in this AT205 for, oh, probably a week or so. And this O-ring used to fit in there, into that little opening. It was, it would just fit in there, you know, kind of loose. And now, it's actually bigger. So this AT205 is supposed to swell, swell the uh, O-rings. So that might be an interesting uh, test for that, because it doesn't fit in there that good anymore. So I'll just when I put the case together, it should squish it together. Okay, so I got everything in here. So now we'll put the case on. Oh, and there's one other thing. There is a, uh, I'm not sure what this is called, but it's to adjust, I think it's to adjust the backlash. I guess this hits on the uh, ring gear and you can adjust it. So somehow you have to put some grease on it, try and hold it in there. much grease but so put that on there okay so we got that on there so this is where the uh, o-ring lines up and I think that's all the parts I have so we'll try and do this without losing that piece. Okay, so now we gotta push this on. Okay. 
just trying to make sure that O ring doesn't move. Okay, so that's it. We'll just loosely put these bolts in. I'm not sure what the torque is on these. Maybe I'll try and look it up. I don't know. Okay, so that's that. So now we got this end to put on. This is the other magnet, it's got the o-ring on it. I think this only goes one way. Like I say, this seal was leaking a bit. So I'm hoping that uh, that miracle oil will fix it up. So we're going to torque these to factory specs. Isn't that what every uh, YouTube guy says? So we'll just torque them down. Okay, that's enough of that. That's boring. All right. 